been pretty hot up there in the hills. It's even hotter down here on the flat. There's no wind down here. Time's gone pretty quick over the last six weeks. It always does that in the bush. And there's another six weeks off my time over in here, so... Haven't got that long to go now. It's only about six and a half months, something like that. Before we went up into the hills, when we were down in the flats, and they were bringing the B-52 strikes. They were fantastic to watch. It's just like the whole hill went up in flame all at once. Just about in, you know, in the area where the bombs were dropped, and the smoke had rise up about two or three thousand feet. It just looked like the whole place was on fire. Really make a big hole. I wouldn't like to be around when they were dropping them. When we did get up there, there's pieces of shrapnel, some of them are three feet long and four feet long. It's cut straight through great big trees, no worries. All the caves and tunnels we found out in this last operation, the engineers blew them up. On the last day, they blew up the biggest one, which is, had been an ordnance factory where they'd been making mines and bombs, etc. They used eight tons of explosive to blow it up. Made a hell of a bang, sprayed stones and stuff for about three quarters of a mile. <coughs> you saw it every day out there, though. They'd blow up small caves and small tunnels. There's always explosions going on in the hills. A lot of the VC that were killed and captured up in the mountains had their families living with them. I feel sorry for them. Because, you know, women and kids, when the husband's gone, they're scared to death in these caves. It takes the interpreters days to talk them out sometimes. And when they do come out, they're worried and scared to death. And you have to, once you've talked to them nicely for a few minutes and given them a few tins of food or something, they're not so bad. They trust you a little bit then, but not too much. They're the ones that get all the bad breaks. The husband's either dead or gone away somewhere else. They leave them behind. They do all the work. Most of them aren't bad. You've got to feel sorry for them. Can't help it. Up in the hills where we were, there were rats everywhere. They really stink too. A lot of squirrels too. In one particular place where there's a lot of baboons, there's about 30 of them, a big family, or twelve, whatever you call it. They're real big, they're about four foot six high, some of them. They've got great long tails, about four foot long, about an inch and a half thick. But it only stayed there the first night we shifted into the area they were there. They were gone the next day. They don't like being around where humans are. We don't like being around in them either because they stink too much. Killed a few snakes out there in the rice paddies and up in the hills a couple of days before we came back. One of the blokes saw a four foot six long cobra. I hope there's not too many of those are eggs. Not very rapid in them. If you do get bit by them, the only thing you can do is to sit down and have a cigarette. It's the only thing you've got time for before you kick the bucket. So I'll be keeping out of their way. In the different caves up there, one was a barber shop, one was a printing shop. There's a, another place in the print, an annex of the printing shop where they had tape recorders and typewriters. Everything. National radios cameras had the works. In one big cave that we found up there, three platoon actually found it, it was being used as a hospital. It had only been evacuated a few days before we got there. And with the documents found and the equipment and that, they had a staff there that had six male nurses, two doctors, plus about 30 patients. Each, by the documents they found out that each VC patient has to pay 2,000 piastres to have treatment there, which is $200, so they must get money from somewhere. Also in the cave they found these pills, they're called vitamin K pills. I think it's the same as what I had a couple of times when I was getting teeth out. It coagulates your blood and makes it a bit thicker and uh, you don't bleed so much. Evidently what they do, they take these pills all the time, these particular ones up in these hills anyway. And when you get shot, they don't leave any blood trails. That's how that has baffled for a while. A few, a few times they were ambushed and they were known to have been hit and we couldn't find any blood trails to follow. Also they found 
in aerosol type packs, some plastic skin which you just spray over a wound or a cut, also stops you from bleeding. So they're a bit better organised than what we thought they were. And I can't imagine anyone being shot back or pulling out a tube of aerosol and spraying himself with this stuff, but apparently they do it because not very often we find blood trails up there. Out in this last operation, there's a few blokes got Kazavac out. A Kazavac, as in case you don't know, is a casualty evacuation. In other words, Kazavac is short for Kazavac or Medivac, a med is a medical evacuation. Well, there's a few blokes got Kazavac out. I thought there's about four of them, two from A Company alone. They all, the doctors thought they had uh, appendicitis, and when they got them from the hospitals, after about four days, they were okay enough. They just sort of swelled up inside, something swelled, I don't know what it was, some part of them. And funny little thing, I was a bit cook out there for a couple of days later, had these headaches and a sore throat, lump in the throat, couldn't swallow probably. And a couple of other blokes had that too, but it just went in a couple of days, I don't know what it was, just probably little things. I think being out in the bush all the time and living outdoors, you get pretty immune to a lot of things. Not strong diseases, but little things. Everyone's got a lot of, they're not ugly looking pimples, they're just little lumps, more like ant bites, all over their back. Mainly their back, shoulders and their arms now. And they're pretty itchy, there's more or less a type of sweat pimple. And they come up on you, everyone's got them. They don't look very nice, you can't really see them that much. Looks like I've got another scar out of this operation. I haven't got too many yet, but pretty easy to get scars over here. I ripped my arm up and on a thorn and it's healed up now. But it looks like it's going to leave a scar there for a while. It's only about an inch in the bar floor. But most of the things, most of the scratches you get over here, they leave small scars when they heal up because with this type of weather over here they heal up real quick and the top part heals up properly and the bottom part doesn't it leaves a scar there in fact most people that have to have operations over here like appendicitis or they take them out straight away but if you have to have any operation at all over here with your stomach cut open they usually send you back to Australia before they do it if they possibly can because they don't like doing operations over here because the outside of the wound heals up quicker than the inside and it, and it takes a long time for you to get better so you usually get tsunami if you anything like that. I've just come back now, been away for about half an hour. Everyone had to have their weapons checked by the armour to make sure there's nothing wrong with them after the operation. That mine was in perfect order, nothing wrong with them. One thing I always do is look after that. It's the closest thing between you and saving your life. Anyone who doesn't look after their weapon over here is a fool. Thank <laughs> you.